So Syria. Syria seems to be the uh, topic of the day. Um, Syrian prepping is what I guess I'll caption this, this video. <clears throat> now, most of you who have been on board on this channel for a while, uh, what I would affectionately call the Mojo diehards, will understand that the main reason for my prepping mostly was for from an external force around the lines of terrorism. Because of my dealings with uh, the ministry that I have, uh, it kind of gets me uh, closer to the things of what's going on in Israel, uh, listening to people that are directly involved in that environment, including um, having people that are pretty much at the forefront and the watchdogs on Islamic radical terrorism that we know today. And as I was uh, going into the ministry, and I'd get exposed and I did research, and I used to be like a major watchdog when it came to of the Middle East where I would be paying attention to every little thing and I would know who's like in charge of Hezbollah, I'd know him by name, I would know. I, I really got, until um, Ryan Murrow came along and that's his job, that's what he does for a living, so I didn't have to watch uh, as diligently where I had to know names and this and that. I just simply, if I come across something suspicious, now I can just call him up and go, can you look into this for me? Because, you know, I have a day job. <laughs> I'd rather not have to delve into that. It's kind of a dark world that I'd rather not. But that being said, you should definitely keep your eye on the Middle East. Uh, the, the, if there is going to be something that's going to cause a world war or cause a situation that is going to spiral this, what we know and as we know it today, the society as we know, what's going to spin it out of control is coming out of the Middle East. There, there's no if, ands, buts about it. Uh, whether you, you have a biblical understanding of it or you're just you don't believe in anything religious and a secular point of view, you will notice that everything is winding up over there. Everything is getting more and more involved, uh, becoming more and more contentious, more and more um, abstract as far as where it's going to go. And that's where, you know, where I get involved in my prepping. Now, I usually, like I said, I've used Drudge Report for that quick news. Um, if I need to get more news, I sometimes will mess, go into Jerusalem Post. And then if I need, you know, also another version of the news, I usually go into um, like a European type, uh, like a BBC sometimes I'll use. And you try to get an idea of what's going on. Now, when you see smoke rising, which is what the Syria thing is, and to me it's just another uh, example of uh, our government getting involved in something to keep our eyes off of the real problems at hand, uh, to keep us from looking at the economy, to keep us, you know, occupied other than looking at, you know, the leadership and the needing of the change of that leadership. That all being said... When these scenarios arise, uh, you know, Russia has a vested interest in Syria and they're going to be involved. Uh, China will be definitely working in the backgrounds in an asymmetrical sort of way. You don't need to know all those. You don't need to get that involved to figure out why. I mean, you could watch people. I, Hibernia Sun does some pretty good an analysis on that. Uh, that I tend to agree with, but you don't have to. What you should look at that is that smoke on the horizon. That these are the times when you should just double check your preps. See, like it, it, you have all the batteries that you had prior. Did you use some of them? Um, is your bug out bag does it have everything, or did you take something out and forget to put it back? Um, is your food need to be rotating? A little bit more because you have more old than new. Um, all these things should be immediately when you start seeing something of that effect, something that's happening like Syria, or there's that hurricane that's brewing, you know, down the coast that might move up in your direction. Um, now, granted, 
life happens. And to me, people who are always ready and prepared, like constantly, to me, I, I, it's hard for me to understand how they can pull that off. If you live a normal life where you're, where you're going to work, going, I mean, some things are going to be amiss. That's why I always, I mean, uh, Bear Prepper and uh, Pet Prepper did one of the best contests that I think ever was on YouTube as far as the prepper, um, where they had everybody turn their power off. I learned more when I had my power outages during Irene and Sandy than I could have read on any survival manual, watched any videos. I could have watched a million Wilderness Outfitters and a million other shows, and I would never have learned the bulk of what I learned in the, those eight days and then the 14 days I had no power. And that's when you're going to really see. You're going to see, you'll get slight glimpses of the psychological impact. Because survival is all in here. And so if people are constantly 100% dead on, ready in their preps all the time, then obviously, <laughs> I don't know, to me, then they're probably um, prepping more than living. Uh, now, granted, uh not everyone's going to have everything just right. And I don't like, I, you know, but I am well aware of where I have to strengthen and where I have to, um, and where I think I'm okay. But what I'm getting at is when you see things like Syria, when you see, you can't get all up in arms and get scared of what you just, you know, you should have the bulk or base, basic needs met food, water, and shelter. Shelter encompasses that you have stuff to heat the shelter, that you have ways to keep warm, you have ways to, uh, you know, to live within that environment. So shelter is kind of a multifaceted thing. It's not just your house. It's how you can maintain the house. Do you have something to put over uh, the windows for insulation and whatnot if, if it gets to the point where you're solely using wood? Um, you know, do you have that taken care of? Um, do you have things to be able to repair a roof if it got damaged in a storm or you have something to throw uh, plastic over in a in a pinch uh, to keep things from getting completely destroyed right off the bat? I mean, those are the type of things with food, water, and then the shelter, what I'm elaborating on now. Now, <clears throat> that's when you see these things like Syria and these storms. This is when you look and make sure that everything's in check. You know, okay, I, I've been like procrastinating on this. Let me get take care of this. Or, you know, oh, I'm a little low on that. I'm going to go get it now. You know what I mean? These are the times. Um, that way, I mean, like I said, you should have all your basics set up. You should have all the basics. Food, water, shelter. That You should be standing on that foundation already. Um, if not, that's what your goal is. You have to focus until you've reached... Uh, the uh, preparedness that you feel comfortable with. I personally, I used to be only three months food, water. Then I decided no. After enough uh, research and stuff, I realized now six months is more because I started reading about pandemics and and that. And then I'm like, you know what? More people are probably going to show up my house. And so then I, I kind of went with a year's worth of food, water, and shelter. Now this didn't happen all at once. This is incremental. So, you know, you can't, those of you who are just starting out, you, you can't just automatically go, oh my God, I, I don't have this, I don't have, no. Think of the, the necessities, food and water are your first and foremost. That's it. Uh, then shelter, make sure you have everything in a shelter. And then I would say protection, you know, you definitely get a gun so you can keep what you have. Um, those are the, those, those are the most important things. Um, that's it. I don't know. I just felt like I had to make this video and I have another video I want to make, which is completely on another topic. Um, I'll have to decide about whether I'm going to do that or not, but that's it. I just wanted to throw my two cents in, you know, we can't get worried about like every little thing that pops up, but we use those things like Syria, like storms, like when you see that smoke on the horizon, now it just, that, take that time to, to put everything in check. Make sure you got your ducks in a row. And and that way, when it does come up, it's not going to be that overwhelming. Or if there's something of lack, you can take care of it right away. All right, do your best. Let God do the rest. Thanks, guys.